Three, two, one. Hey, internet friend, this is Magic Brad with the Magic Brad Show. And I'm here with a new friend I met, and her name is Marty, and the last name is Statler. Did I get that right? Yes, Statler. How are you doing, Marty? Fabulous, how are you? Wonderful and a half, and then some to the 10th power infinity, which we'll do in a pinch. <laughs> so where in the world are you located? I am in Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, so I'm an hour and a half outside of DC in Baltimore. There's Amish people in Pennsylvania, right? Yes, like 20 minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm closer to Amish people than I am to DC and Baltimore. 20 minutes, we're from buggies. <laughs> Somebody was uh, made a joke about how many hits you get on your website. You got more than the Amish. <laughs> they don't do websites, <laughs> I don't think. Maybe, I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't think they do. I don't That'd think they do cool. or cars. Oh, you live there. Well, Almost my entire life. I was born in Indianapolis. My parents were both military. I came about and they moved back here to Pennsylvania shortly thereafter. And this is where I've stayed. I don't know. Minneapolis. Why. I'm in Minneapolis and some people call it Minneapolis. Yeah, you're in Minneapolis. Minneapolis. <laughs> Minneapolis. <laughs> Certainly. So you're married and got kids and all that stuff? I am married for 15 years. I've got three daughters who are I don't know if you want to know all this, but I want to tell you 25, 23, 17. I have almost graduated my very last child. I'm super excited. And I've got four grandbabies. A herd. Holy smokes. Generations. I know they're great. They're great to send them back. I'm like, when are you coming back for them? I love them. But I'm like, when are you coming back? We're not leaving this open-ended. Yeah, exactly. You know, they got to get off and get on their own. You got to kick them out of the nest eventually. Yeah, right? yeah, of course. Unless you're like the Waltons, you know, they kind of stack them on top and grandma and grandpa are still there. And that, I, 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 one of my favorite places on the planet is Bali. And that's Bali. how they do it. Bali, Indonesia. Yeah. Yeah. You've been there. I, a couple of times. I was going to move there until I got married. <laughs> really? That, Bali is one of the most peaceful places I've ever been. It's very, very. Yeah. And very affordable. I had a place I was going to stay there for 60 bucks a month. Yeah, that's amazing. I um, eat, pray, love totally yeah. made me want to travel and just leave for yeah. an entire year. That's uh, that's kind of me too. Um, yeah. so I haven't though. You know, I spent fifty three years in the same house in Fridley, Minnesota, and then I got married and we moved to the West Side. So I'm pretty. In fact, my brother still lives there. But enough about me. Let's talk about you. <laughs> So I read some of your stuff. You've got a, you, you're, you're the rebel queen. I can kind of sense that a little bit. You probably don't follow the, the normal path, maybe blaze the trail for other people, a pioneer, if you will. You. And you help people with their book. And I loved your title yeah. on there because it says, write your damn book. Because there's people that have yeah. these ideas for a book and it stops them. And, it, it's and that's bizarre. where it stays. Yeah, that's where it stays, right there in their head. And that's a disservice to the people that it could possibly read it. Yes, exactly. Okay, so listen. So one of the biggest things, like one of the biggest things that I hear from people is, why would I write this book? There's already like, I don't know, 45 books on this subject. And listen, there is not a book from you on that subject. Because here's the reality, like you are reaching a different market of people than what the other 45 people are. Totally. And, you know, and even if, okay, so listen, I'm sure if you go to your personal library, you'll see... Like, so my personal library, which is not obviously behind me because we're painting right now. However, all of my books fall into like several categories. It's like I read leadership books, I read money books, I read self-help books, but I have multiple books all pertaining to each of these subjects. So there's some foundational things that you'll find a common thread in a lot of these books, but there's always a new perspective that comes to that. And if I want to really learn something, I want to hear all the perspectives so I can come up with my own. Well, also people, when they read a book, they, they hear different things from the book. And if they read it again, they hear things differently or they, they, yeah. take, they take things. Yeah. It's like music. I mean, if you would you only listen to a song once? Mm -mm. No. There's different stuff in books. And like you said, I think different people resonate different ways and gravitate toward the different book. Yeah. Um, exactly. It's fascinating to me that like, look at Amazon is built off of books. And you go into a library and you see all these books. You go into a Goodwill or a secondhand store and you see all these books. Where yeah. are all these books coming from? Well, people okay, are consuming them. Fun fact, one and a half million books were published last year. That's a lot of books. That's a lot of books. And that's just one that were registered published. I'm sure there's a lot of uh, 
ebooks that people have put out and yeah, stuff that's exactly. Out there. And the publishing yeah. world has changed. And I just, it's interesting because I just interviewed somebody else about a week and a half ago about the same kind of thing about you know, getting your book done. Yeah. And it's, it's important to find someone like you. So this is props for you. You've been there, done that. Yes. But when a person has never done it, they go, well, they good, do all the stuff. And then they find out, oh my God, you mean I'm supposed to print that little thing on the back, the little code, mm -hmm. the USBN number or something like that? Yeah, ISBN in the barcode, yeah. Yeah, yeah if you don't know that, whoops, made a big mistake, right? Yeah. So, and there's all sorts of things that you kind of, like I said, already blazed the trail and a person can write that book. And like we were talking, like the Chicken Soup or the Soul series, that yeah. is brilliant because they didn't write it. Other no. people wrote it. No. Yes. So if you've got a problem with content, you just got a, a theme that you want to get out. There's ways of getting other people to write your book so you can get the thing yeah. out there. Just source other people, source other people's content to write your book. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And if you're wondering, what should I write about? Go to your blog, take all that content and put it in a book. It's already there. Put a yeah. cover on and sell your damn book. <laughs> yeah. So do you coach people through all this stuff or do you have classes and stuff that you help? Okay, so yes and yes. So okay. I do people through it. Um, I'm actually getting ready to start a writing class because I, I don't know about you, but for me, like I schedule Mondays for writing, right? Um, but I do really well with accountability. So most of the people that I talk to, it's like they have these great book ideas and I can talk you through laying out who is your audience, you know, what are we going to tell them? What's your table of contents look like? Like, what do they need to know in your book to come to the conclusion that they want you, that you want them to come to? But it comes down to actually writing the book, right? You have to actually do the work. So um, I'm getting ready to start like a group writing program where we're just getting together on Monday mornings and we're writing our book together. That helps. Three months, three months, yes. You got that synergy thing going on. That's my little thing, synergy. Yeah. Kind of thing. Where there's an, I would call it accountability buddy. Um, that, that used to be a thing, but I think that people can be, um, this is just my opinion. I think yeah. if they're inspired, they want to write the book. You know, if they're yeah. motivated or, you know, incentivized or whatever, they're being pushed to write the book. I don't feel like writing. Well, you got to wake up and go, oh my God, I got a great idea. I got to write this down and get all excited about it. And there's things that I'm sure that you probably have these certain questions you can ask. Like, like you know, what's your why? Yeah. You got this book and you don't know, you don't, maybe, I don't know if I want to write the book. It's a lot of work, you know, writing and all that stuff. Well, what about your daughter? You know, she would love to be able to say that my mom wrote this book. Now you've got a reason. Yeah. <laughs> and all of a sudden you'll start writing. Yeah. And have that writer's block. Someone told me that's not, that's an illusion. Actually, I don't believe in writer's block either. Yeah. Not at all. You know what I think writer's block is? I think it is unnecessary fear. expectations you have on yourself. That's a fear. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is, the worst case scenario is what if nobody buys it? You still got a book. What Take if one person card? bought it? Okay, listen, and I've said this. So the very first company that I worked for, I've been doing this for 12 years. The very first company that I worked for, I would talk to people because they would come and they'd be like, um, you know, I'm going to be a New York Times bestseller, blah, blah, blah. And like, I have to rein them in. Like, okay, let's bring this down. So let's just say you've done all of this work and only one person reads your book, but that book changed that one person's life. Like, is oh, that going to be enough? I mean, because most of the people that I work with, like they are patching, packaging up their expertise to help somebody's life, right? So if one person reads it and it, you know, dramatically changes their life, I mean, we've all read books that have changed us in some way, shape or form. Like, is that enough for you? I don't know anybody that's ever said no. Well, that's I'm a strategic marketer too. And there's situations like often as a magician, this is, that's what I did back in the yeah. 70s, 80s and 90s. And people inevitably would say, you know, we'd like you to come perform for our event, but we don't have much of a budget because we're a nonprofit. It's for a good cause and you get all that stuff. The, yes. And then you get in there and they bought this giant ice sculpture and it's all decorated with hundreds of thousands of dollars. Well, where I thought you didn't have a budget. You know? Yeah, no, everybody has the money for what's important to them. Yeah. But I don't care how little or how much you have. But what I'm getting at is if you got a bunch of books and you can't move them for some reason because you're not a good marketer, donate your time to speak at the event under the prerequisite that says, I need bye, to bye, bye. gift one of these books and these books I'm selling for $9.95 and I'll give you the price of $6.95. So you have yeah. to buy these 500 books and then I'll speak for you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'll speak Actually, for free. With, 
yeah, I work for some speakers that they, they, they do that. They say, Hey, like you don't have a speaker's budget. Great. I will come donate my time, but buy a book because there's line items for like purchasing these books for their people. Totally. And then they get a little gift bag. All the attendees get yeah. a little gift bag with a bunch of little goodies and a book and they go, yeah. Oh my God, it was so fun having that speaker. Yep. Totally yeah. get it. <laughs> my wife's got a book out and then she's on, she's on her way building another one. She's a, a shaman and dream teacher. She helps people with their dreams and figure out their mm. life stuff. Kind of cool. But yeah, I digress. Let's get back to you. No, that's fine because I'm like, oh, what's her website? I want to check her out. It's monicakenton.com. Okay. Just like that. K with a K. K, K, Kenton. K E N T O N. You got it. <laughs> Monica, look, we just plugged you. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> that's the way it works. So, do you, when you do your stuff, you do do you li live trainings because in you know, the COVID stuff you can't really do that. But did you yeah, before? Actually, yeah, no, I just taught a writing class a couple weeks ago for um, a networking group. It was amazing. Got on there and I just went through like, hey, here's how you get your book structured. So from the beginning of the class to the end of the class, you've got all of the information that you need to get started writing your book with the structure to write your book. Now you just need to go write your damn book. <laughs> that's that's what it says on your website, doesn't it? Yeah write your damn book exactly for i like that kind of stuff because it doesn't have all that fluffy corporate trying to impress you talk and no. i think that's becoming more and more evident on the internet is yeah. i like to see those real shelves behind you with no books in there it's not a green screen it's because you're painting you're a real <laughs> human being if the cat jumps up on the desk you're authentic and right real and genuine yeah so that's what i like write your damn book that's yes. what you'd say in real person, right? In yeah, I absolutely say I've got a potty mouth. So um, if someone's offended by a potty mouth, then I'm probably not the one for you. Unless they can get there through it. You know, Gary Vaynerchuk's done pretty good for himself. Yeah, he has. Absolutely. <laughs> He's got a bit of a potty mouth. But you haven't pottied yet, so that's okay. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> oh, so let, let me know how do we get a hold of you because we're kind of coming to the end i don't do these real long because people have to have the time to consume yeah. it all and we can do another one too if you've got a special new book launch or product launch or something i love yeah. doing these over and over because longevity is what makes this stuff all work yeah actually that would be fun so i mean you can find me online at rebelqueen.co um I do free discovery calls and I book my discovery calls for 20 minutes, but I usually end up on the phone with them for an hour anyway, because I love talking books. Um, one of the other things that I really love doing is talking to new authors. So I really love explaining the industry to them. And, you know, listen, whether you want to self publish, whether you're looking for a traditional publisher, you know, where you're looking at an advance and some marketing dollars behind what you're doing. Like, I just love being able to explain the differences in the industry and what you should be looking for in contracts, because that's really important. And most people don't know what they're looking at. And they get themselves tied up into something they're like oh shit i just signed away all the intellectual rights to my book yeah or uh, i didn't realize i had to go on tour and be away from my family for six months sign mm -hmm. things and is, away at your cost yeah so there's other ways of getting yeah. things out these days that uh, yeah absolutely cool stuff. so it's it's always good to have someone blaze the trail and cut chop down all them you know thorns yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> Well, very cool. Hey, Marty, I appreciate you taking the time. Rebelqueen.co. Yeah. Just like that. I'm going to, I'll put that in the YouTube link too. And um, when this gets out, if you could share it and propagate it out to the world and we'll let the internet do its thing. So I appreciate you being on the show and let's do it again sometime because this was lots of fun. Okay. Peace. Perfect. <laughs>